Hello and welcome to this presentation on a thermal contact in a static thermal model. Here we have two independent bodies. In a coupled analysis, they might be connected together by a joint, but joints in ANSYS Workbench Mechanical don't transfer any heat. They're ignored in a thermal analysis. If we have just a thermal analysis not connected to a structural run, you'll discover that you can't create any kind of thermal link between bodies. That capability has not been programmed into the interface. There are two ways with the given interface in which you could get a thermal contact between these two bodies. One is with a manual contact region, which could act across a gap like this as long as you make the pinball big enough. Another thing you could do, which might or might not have the required accuracy, would be to couple temperatures between adjacent faces. That will make the two faces chosen carry exactly the same temperature values. Here we've set up a temperature on the left of 100 degrees and a temperature on the right of 22. When we solve this model, one body is entirely at 100 degrees and the other is entirely at 22 and there is no heat flow across this gap. We can check on that by looking at temperatures merely on these two faces and one of them is uniformly at 100 and the other at 22. The simpler way to connect them is to couple their temperatures together. That might not be physically accurate enough but it will make a thermal connection here with no resistance to heat flow. Let's right click and insert coupling. We'll choose the two faces, one here and the other here, and apply. And because it's a thermal analysis, the degree of freedom that will be coupled is the temperature. So when we solve the model, we'll end up with the same temperature here as if we were in perfect thermal contact. No pinball is required in this approach. Let's go down and solve and wait a moment. Here is the temperature distribution. You'll notice the same color across these two faces because the temperatures are coupled. And if we look just at the temperatures on the faces, you'll see that it's completely uniform. All nodes on those chosen areas have their temperatures coupled to one value. So that's the first approach you could take. The second approach, let's get rid of that coupling, is to go to connections and insert a manual contact region. This model was developed with the gap big enough that no contact was automatically created. As I said before, this might be used in a structural model to have a joint here, but the joint will not transmit any heat. So for the thermal portion of the analysis, an approach we could use is to have a contact. Let's make one face be the contact side, and the other face be the target. We can use a bonded contact. Let's go to asymmetric behavior. That's simple enough. And scroll down and this is only a contact for thermal purposes, so we can make it be pure penalty. We cannot use MPC because it will couple temperatures, but if we stick with the penalty technique, we get to put in a thermal conductance value. Now the default is a very high thermal conductance so that there's virtually no temperature drop across the interface. We can, however, put a finite value in, a manual value. Now it will be up to the user to come up with a physically realistic value for what that thermal conductance value is going to be given the nature of the materials and geometry used in the actual joint. For the purpose of experimentation, let's suggest, and I'm in the unit system of millimeters, so let's suggest just point 05, hit enter, watts per square millimeter per degree temperature difference across the gap. That will put in some thermal resistance, but you will get some heat flow. 
We're not done yet. We have to make that pinball bigger than the gap. So we have to manually put in a pinball radius value bigger than that gap. And it looks like perhaps 15 millimeters would do. 15, hit the Enter key, and you can see that the pinball will span that gap. So I will get heat transfer across here. Let's go down now and solve the model. And wait a moment. Here we are. Here now is our temperature distribution. And let's see what the temperature drop is. We're going from 56 down to 54. So there is a delta T here because we do not have perfect thermal contact. And in this way, as long as a user can come up with a physically realistic estimate as to what that thermal conductance value ought to be, then you can get a temperature drop between the two bodies. There's a complication. If you do a thermal analysis and link it to a structural run like this, by taking the structural run and dropping it on the solution cell of the thermal run, you will get a model link. And what that does is put your thermal contact into the structural model as well. So now these things are stuck together with bonded contact. If I go inspect the details, I still have that thermal conductance value but I'm also, you can see the stiffness entry, going to get a structural contact between them. That can't get these things to work independently. What you have to do is not use the model link. So let me get rid of this. Now I'll drag in the static structural run and drop it directly on the geometry cell. Then I'll take the solution from the thermal run and feed it into the structural run. I'll get the temperatures from the thermal analysis, but I can approach my structural model independently. Let's edit the structural model. No connection came through. I have to do my meshing work over again. I can approach that as I wish. I do, however, have temperatures being imported. So if I go here to mesh, for the sake of speed, crank down relevance and just mesh the model, I can go to imported body temperature, right click and import the load. I see the temperatures that came from my thermal analysis. I can now go up and put in whatever kind of connection I want. For example, I could put a joint between these two bodies. Let's put a reference side here, a mobile side there, and say make this a revolute joint and you'll notice it could spin freely around the z-axis. So this is how I could have joints between things and still have some temperature transfer between them. So the key is back here you're linking the solution but not the model and then you can approach your joints and connections independently in the thermal and structural runs. I hope that you will find that useful. Thank you for joining me.